That's one of those gospels after which you're like, are we sure we want to say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus is on a rant. Whoa, right? All right, well, before I dive into it, I just want to again welcome our grandparents from uh, the students from here at Sacred Heart School. It's good to have you here for the continuation of Grandparents Week uh, that we're celebrating, so it's really good to have you. I want to uh, direct our attention, as much as I want to preach on all the woes of the gospel, I want to direct our attention back to the first reading of St. Paul to the Romans. St. Paul asks this, he says, Do you hold his priceless kindness and forbearance and patience in low esteem, unaware that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? The kindness of God would lead you to repentance. I want us to linger there for a little while here this morning. Again, the kindness of God would lead you to repentance. I think it is very important for us uh, in the church today to correct some of the modern distortions that surround the person of Jesus, people's understanding of Jesus, that I don't know where it's really come from over the years, but there's this uh, this sense that Jesus was really just kind of a first century nice guy who really just told people, just be nice, get along, and then you'll be good, right? First century nice guy, that's okay. That's not who Jesus was, right? These, I think it's important for us to correct that by saying it's true. Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the ultimate warrior. He came to rescue us, to do battle against sin and death and Satan, to conquer hell. Yeah, Jesus is intense in many, many ways, right? That the cross, the crucifixion, was not merely the unfortunate conclusion to his life that was so full of promise, right? He was put to death precisely because he claimed to be God, because he came to do battle against our, uh, our ancient foe, right? He's an int- there's something very, very intense about him, right? Okay, all of that is true, but he is also an especially tender mercy. Tender mercy. Like the reason why he's so intense, the reason why he came to do battle in the first place is not because he had a heart full of fury and anger. It, be, it was because he had a heart full of passion and love. He, like the reason he's the line of Judah is because he's so passionate about not just y'all, not just everybody, but he's passionate about you. Right? Jesus doesn't see crowds. He sees individual faces. And far more often than not, it is we who are the ones who treat ourselves uh, most unkindly, especially our hearts and our stories. Right? He did not come because he was unkind. He didn't come because he was angry. He came because he was filled with tender mercy. Like, we are the ones who beat ourselves up all the time. We're the ones who heap condemnation upon ourselves and self-recrimination. We're we're the ones who do a lot of that negative self-talk that's harsh and critical, judgmental of ourselves. Like, how could you have done fill in the blank? Or what were you thinking when fill in the blank? It's a lot of the self-talk that we have in our hearts as disciples. We are so unkind often to our hearts. We shut our hearts down or when things pop up, when, we, when things that seem like they shouldn't upset us, they do upset us. We say things like, man, that's like, gosh, this is nothing. Why are you acting like this? Just get over it. I want us to know that, like, that is not at all how Jesus deals with our hearts. It's not how he thinks about us. That's not how he treats our hearts. Do you not know that the kindness of God would lead you to Repentance share a story here with you. A little while ago, I, um, I was with my spiritual director. So every priest, every religious, we're supposed to have a spiritual director that we meet uh, with frequently, right? So I was with my spiritual director, and I was rehashing some things with him that had happened recently in my life. And I was telling him a story about someone who I love very much, who had done something, who had said some stuff that had really hurt me deeply, had cut me deeply. And as I was telling the story, uh, I told it like I was reporting the news in many ways. And I just kind of moved on to the next detail of the story. As I was talking, my spiritual director stopped me. He put up his hand like this. He said, Patrick, well, stop there for a second. What did he say? And I repeated again the detail of the story, what the person had said. Again, kind of matter-of-factly. And he stopped me again and just said, Patrick, stop, stop. Because I need a moment. And I looked up at him. And he had tears, like, welling up in his eyes. 
He was weeping over me. He was weeping for what my heart had suffered. He was weeping and he was so moved like for my struggle, my pain, all of those things. I just, I don't recall anybody ever doing that for me before. And like, as you might imagine, I was just moved tremendously. The kindness of God would lead you to repentance. Like, do you not know? Do you not know that he weeps for you? Not because he's sad or angry or disappointed. He weeps because we suffer and struggle and have suffered tremendous things. Like, I just think we're very quick to assume that Jesus' bedside manner when it comes to our hearts is harsh or frustrated or cold or just like, just get your act together. When you're dealing with your issues, your pain, just like get your act together, get your stuff together and be on your way. That's just not his bedside manner. That's not his heart. Do you not know how kind he is? Do you not know how patient and tender he is? Do you not know how truly interested in you he is? Like grandparents, I know some of us have been at this discipleship thing for a long time. And maybe we get to a place where we just assume this is as much as I'm going to get out of Jesus in this life. That's a lie. Like, do you not know that he is still deeply interested in all of those things from your life and your story that no one's ever wept with you about? That dog that ran away when you were five. That friend that moved away when you were eight. Your parents divorced when you were ten. That breakup when you were 14. Like all of those things that no one ever wept with us about. He wants to weep with us about. Do you not know that the kindness of God would lead you to repentance? It's his kindness. It's his tender mercy. His genuous, genuine interest in you. That's what leads to repentance. Because when you encounter that kind of love, a love that loves like that, which is so kind and so overwhelming, it's so powerful. It's not conversion out of fear. It's conversion out of a awe, an overwhelming realization that you love me this much. May you and I experience that today. And if we haven't experienced it yet, may we long for it. May we be open to Jesus and his kindness, his tender mercy. Amen.